we welcome you to the Lighthouse in Cherry Tree, Pennsylvania, with founders and pastors Ken and Wilda Brown. And now, let's go into the service already in progress. Uh, we're going to turn into the book of Exodus for a, a few moments tonight, and then we're going to march with the timbrels. When I was looking at this, Exodus chapter 15, and uh, instead of 26, I'm going to start with verse 9. Verse 9 of Exodus 26, and I'm using my 26 translations, and uh, you can put the Amplified if you will, please. Exodus 15 and verse 9. And the enemy said, and the enemy said, and the enemy said, the enemy said this. The enemy said, I will pursue. Another version says, the enemy boasted and said, I'm going to pursue after them. The enemy cried out and said, I will go and I will take them. And uh, then King James again, it says, and I will overtake. I will catch up with them. And then I will take them and I will divide the spoil. And I will share the plunder. The enemy is saying, my lust shall be satisfied upon them. My soul will devour them. I will feast upon them. My vengeance will come upon them. And my heart's content, Knox translation says, that I will be satisfied because I will draw out my sword. I will unloose my sword. And my sword shall slay them. And my hand shall destroy them. The enemy said several things here. Number one, the enemy said, I'm going to pursue after those who know this Jesus. And he's saying that today. And he's saying, I'm going to overtake you, and I'm going to divide you, and my lust shall be satisfied, and I'm going to devour you, and my work, I will work my will on them, and my heart's content. I will draw my sword, and my hand shall destroy them, conquer them, and subdue them, and I will rid myself of them, I will despoil them, and repress them, and repossess them. And verse 10 says, And thou, Lord, didst blow with thy wind. And over in verse 7 it says, And you have overthrown them that rose up against thee. And what I want to say to you tonight is there is a prophetic word right here in this word as we're getting ready, and this is previous to what we're going to talk about. The enemy is boasting right now. And the enemy is saying, I'm going to pursue after the Christian. I'm going to pursue after this nation. I'm going to pursue after these people. And I, the enemy is saying, just like Egyptians were saying, I will overtake them and I will divide the spoil and I will be satisfied upon them and I'm going to take everything they have and I will devour them and I will work my heart's content on them. I will draw my sword against them and unsheath my sword and my hand shall destroy them and conquer them and subdue them and they shall become a spoil and I will repossess re, um, re them. And verse 10 says, Thou, Lord, didst blow with thy wind and the sea covered them and they sank as lead in the mighty waters. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You, Lord, blew with your wind and the sea covered them clad them in mail, and they sank as lead in the mighty waters. Uh, I got news for you. I've got news, good, good news for you. Uh, there is a place uh, that we are, have now come to. I shouldn't say are coming to. Uh, we have come to with power and authority uh, where no matter what the enemy says, uh, God is working a sovereign work, uh, and he is going to overtake the enemy, uh, and he is going to overthrow them, all those that rise up against you. Anyone who rises up against uh, the men or women of God are going to be despoiled themselves. Uh, what they intend on you, there is a boomerang time, uh, and what they say against you is going to go back on their own heads, uh, and they are going to be despoiled. So when they say, I will pursue, it is time that this army begins to pursue the enemy. It is time that when the enemy said, I will overtake them, that through Jesus Christ and the power that he has given us, we are going to overtake the enemy. 
He says, I will despoil them and I will take everything they have and I will take the spoil from them and I will plunder them. And now is time for you and I to go into the enemy's camp and take back what the enemy has been trying to spoil. He has been speaking with his mouth, but he has no backup. We will speak with our mouth and make confession and we have the backup of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Heavenly Father, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And not only that, God has released his four angels uh, from the heavens, uh, the four spiritual heavens, uh, uh, angels. uh, And I will draw my sword. The enemy says, I will draw my sword. I'm going to draw my sword also. For the sword is the word of God. And my hand shall destroy them. The enemy said, my hand shall destroy them. I will conquer them. I will give them a fatal blow. It says in one verse, and I will despoil them. I will repossess them. And then it says, oh Lord, what you did, what you did to them back there, you had the east wind come. And the east wind spoiled the enemy and overthrew them that rose up against you. And they sank as lead. I never saw that before. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. They sank like uh, lead in the waters, uh, terrible waters. uh, Hallelujah. So God is getting ready for great things. And Pastor Willow was talking about Miriam this morning, verse 21 now. And Miriam answered them, and she said, well, verse 20, I'm sorry, verse 20. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took out a timbrel in her hand. And all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. And the women followed after her with timbrels and choruses. And they began to take the tambourines, and they danced before the Lord. Verse 21 And I'm reading several versions in there, of course. Uh, Verse 21, And Miriam said, Sing ye unto the Lord. And Miriam said, I'm going to lead you in a refrain. And she sang unto them and chanted and began to teach them to sing. For the Lord has triumphed gloriously. Everybody say, The Lord Lord has triumphed triumphed gloriously. gloriously. Say it again. The Lord Lord is triumphing gloriously in this little place uh, on a mother's day uh, out in the hills of western pennsylvania we're going to see the hand of the lord move as never before and we're going to see victory coming to the people of god victory is on the move and so we're going down into the story now and we're going to move uh, and i'm going to move you from one place to the other in verse 22 it says now remember they have just come across the Red Sea, which was an obstacle. And God separated, did a wondrous thing. Somebody say, wondrous things are about to happen. The Red Sea disappeared for them, sat up on either side. And as the Red Sea was separated, it was a wondrous, miraculous act that God did for his children. I'm going to tell you something tonight prophetically uh, that from the word of God uh, that God is about to do uh, a wondrous, glorious uh, act again for the children of God. Uh, He's going to move in ways that you would think impossible. Uh, As they stood and they knew the Egyptians were coming from behind and they could see the dust of the Egyptians uh, and the chariots coming uh, and the Egyptians had already declared and decreed we're going to go and we're going to catch up with them we're going to overtake them we're going to spoil them we're going to ruin them we're going to take everything they have and all that saying meant nothing because God blew an east wind and the waters the obstacles separated and As that happened, as Moses raised the rod, of course, uh, and that separated, and as they went across, uh, they got to the other side. And now they're on the other side, and they're looking, seeing the chariots and the horses and the enemy. Do you still see the enemy trying? You still see the enemy trying to get to you uh, and take this nation? I'm going to tell you something. Uh, You can look over your shoulder uh, and you can see the enemy coming. uh, But you don't want to forget uh, that there is another wind that is about to blow. uh, And it's a wind uh, by the power and the anointing uh, of the Holy Spirit. uh, And as the Holy Spirit blows that wind and the wind begins to blow, I believe it's coming out of the east. uh, And as the wind comes uh, out of the east, uh, it is going to spoil 
spoil that which the enemy has spoken and everything the enemy has said that they're going to overtake, they're going to overturn you and they're going to take your things, you're going to take your money, they're, you're, they're, they're just going to come and take all your possessions. They're going to take your children. They're going to take your grandchildren. And all that that they said, God then is going to send a wind once again. And there's going to be a sovereign move of the Holy One of Israel. And He's blowing the wind. And it's going to spoil the enemy. Somebody ought to get up and give a good hand clap onto the Lord and say, Hallelujah. We thank you for victory tonight. And we give you praise, Lord. Let the wind come once again. Let the wind of the east, the east wind, come and blow over this house, blow over this place. Let the wind, let the trumpets begin to blow. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. Victory. Somebody shout, Victory, victory, victory. In the name of Jesus. You may be seated. As they looked over their shoulder, they saw the enemy coming. And they saw the enemy coming into the same place that they had just walked over on dry ground. But for some reason, all of a sudden, their chariots were getting stuck in the mud. I said, some of them were stuck in the mud. I said, the enemy is stuck in the mud. I said, I'm not stuck in the mud. The enemy's stuck in the mud. I'm walking on dry ground. I'm walking uh, on the ground that God has prepared and those places that God has prepared. Uh, and so they looked uh, and they saw all of a sudden that that wind that was holding the water and the waves back uh, for a whole nation to cross over. Uh, and now the enemy is in the midst of the same place uh, and thinking, if they can do it, we can do it. Yeah. If, they, if those Christians can do it, we can do it. Uh, they got a surprise coming because God is going to release the wind and the waters are going to come and they're going to sink like lead to the bottom of the waters. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So they had great victory and Miriam and, and the ladies in verse 20 and 21, Miriam the prophetess and uh, all the women went out uh, and they began with timbrels and with dances and with rejoicing uh, and with singing. Uh, they, I don't know if they were singing God's got an army or not, uh, but they were singing something. But they were singing glory. Sing unto the Lord triumphantly, uh, for he has triumphed gloriously. Triumphant, uh, became triumphant gloriously. Uh, and the rider has been thrown into the sea. And I like that passage over there. It says, uh, and they sank right down like lead in the mighty waters that God had prepared for them. Hallelujah. And so with all that, I'm moving into 22 now. And Moses now is taking them from the Red Sea. A great miracle had just happened. Moses begins to sing a song before the Lord and, and uh, then uh, Miriam gets up and the ladies get up with their timbrels uh, and they began to praise the Lord. Listen, mamas, uh, this is a day that, that we honor you. And I said something this morning. It's not my saying. I don't know who said it, but uh, uh, I'm just quoting what somebody else said. The mother who rocks the cradle also rolls the nation. And so what is happening... Uh, Oh, there's not a thousand of you here tonight, uh, but all the ladies tonight and all men also, uh, because Moses began, and he began to sing triumphantly uh, and said, look what God has done. Somebody say, look what the Lord has done. Somebody say it again, look what the Lord has done. Well, he healed my body and he touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Look what the Lord is now doing. And I believe, this is prophetic right now, I believe that there is a wind of the Holy Spirit coming from the heavens. And that wind is going to sweep away a lot of the lies and sweep away a lot of the things and the confessions of the enemy. And as they have confessed that they're going to overtake, they will be overtaken. The words that came out of their mouth will return to them as a boomerang and they will be spoiled and they will be taken down in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now we see that Moses is leaving the place of the Red Sea, the place of the miracle, and it's time to move onward. Somebody say, it's time to move onward. Miracles are going to happen. We know that. Signs are going to happen. Uh, I, I, I just, uh, you, you know, maybe you're not getting this, but to me, this was a sign for me. 
That when that dropped out, I know what I'm to preach. I know what the Lord has for you tonight. And so when we see that, we see here, Moses brought them now from the place of the miracle. They were singing, they were dancing, they were praising the Lord. Somebody say, they were full of joy. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. And so as they went and they began to move, and Moses had Israel move, they went out into the wilderness of Shur. Sure, there's going to be some tests. Sure, there's going to be some walls. Sure, there's going to be a testing of whether you know the word of God or not. Now remember, they just saw a great miracle happen where they came through that that waters were parted by the east wind. And as the waters were parted, they walked over and they saw a great miracle that they are now on the other side. Then they saw another great miracle where the enemy came in to try to do the same thing. And, oh, maybe you didn't get that. The enemy will try to do the same thing, but they were defeated and uh, defeated by the Lord God Almighty because he allowed the waters to come back. And so there was a great miracle, and right after that miracle, and it says in there three days, uh, in three days uh, they went out and they started out into the wilderness of Shur. And the word Shur means a wall. And so there will be walls. There will be things that try to come against you, uh, but you already know that God is doing great miracles. I can't go on until somebody gets a hold of that. <laughs> You already know that God is, a, is full of wonders. And God, if he brought a pastor a sign, and you say, that's just a little piece of paper. That, to me, is a sign of what God's doing. And so if he brought a sign to your pastor, he's going to bring a wonder to you. And God is getting ready for great miracles. Hallelujah. And so is the, the miracles about ready to take place. Uh, and we're singing and we're rejoicing. Uh, we ought to be singing and rejoicing. And this was a great day today. Uh, Jack said to me when, when the mothers were coming up to get their flowers. And by the way, any mother that wasn't here this morning, you can come up and, and uh, take, a, take a flower after service. You can't have the balloon, though. That belongs to my wife. Okay. All right. That's uh, what? That's yours. Okay. All right. Anything else you can have? All right. So, uh, and anyway, we see now that they're singing and they're rejoicing and they have victory and they're triumphing. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on. Somebody ought to do it. Hallelujah. And then Moses says, we got to go onward. And he takes them to the wilderness of shore. And when they get to the wilderness of shore, Three days later, three days after the miracle, that's why I told you don't stay with your miracle, but don't forget what God has done. And give him glory over your miracle. Give him glory if you have received a healing. Jerry received a healing of his shoulder, and for weeks he, he was complaining about, I guess he's over there on the camera now, but he was complaining about that shoulder and I said something to him Wednesday night, and he said, I just want to thank God my shoulder's healed. All that, all that time. When did it happen? I don't know when it happened, but it happened. And we give him glory. We give Jesus Christ the glory and the honor. We pray, we pray, we lay hands on, and you just keep laying hands on. If nothing happens, lay hands on again. And if nothing happens, lay hands on again. And if you didn't get your miracle the first time, go the second time. If you didn't get it the second time, go the third time. But there is a miracle in the making. There is a wonder that God's about to do because I have the sign and it fell right out of his Bible and fell out of the word of God and it is the word of God. And I'm going to tell you there is healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I was going to stay up there tonight. Hallelujah. 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 You just keep praising him for what he's doing. And then we go three days after a great miracle. I mean, 1.2 million people saw that miracle. And they go out into the wilderness of shore three days later, and they start moaning and groaning. Where's the God of Israel? Maybe they left him back at the Red Sea. When they moved forward, while they moved forward, Moses led Israel onward from the Red Sea and they went into the wilderness of Shur. And I looked up Shur and it means a wall. They went there three days, 33 miles, wow, in the wilderness. And guess what? 
there was no water. No water. Hmm. And they went three days in the wilderness, and there was no water. Uh, they went, actually, it amplified here, says 30, 33 miles. Uh, and uh, so they traveled there, and they found no water. No water to drink. And so then they went on. They said, there's no water here. And so they went on to another place called Mara, M-A-R-A-H, verse 23, please. Uh, and when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the water of Mara because the waters were bitter waters. Uh, you remember Naomi? I was asking my wife today, I said, you remember Naomi, what she said uh, when she had to leave and go to another country? Uh, she said, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara because I have bitterness of soul. But uh, she had a Ruth along with her and uh, things changed in their lives uh, because they, uh, uh, God blessed uh, Naomi and also Ruth. Uh, and so as we see here, they came to the bitter waters. Uh, and as they came to the bitter waters, and I wrote this down here, they came to the bitter waters uh, and it was called the place of bitterness. Uh, you see, there was a place of miracles. Then three days later, there's a place of no water. And they said, what are we going to do now? We're out in the wilderness. We don't have any water for our cattle. We don't have any water for our kids. We don't have any water. There is no water here. What are we going to do? So they went on forward, and they came to a place, and you know how they are. You know how we are. As soon as they saw that water, they went running to it, and immediately they found out it was bitter. And it was a place of bitterness, and therefore they called the name of that place bitterness. And the people murmured against Moses. And the people grumbled. And the people complained. And they cried, and they said, what shall we drink? What are we to drink? We come out here. Listen, if God moved a whole sea, could he not provide a well of water? How, how stupid. But yet we're the same way. We're the same way. God moves on a Sunday night and the power of God comes down and, uh, or on a Sunday morning uh, and the glory of God fills our hearts and our lives uh, and we're rejoicing uh, and we're having a victory day today for the mamas uh, and as we go out of here, uh, but three days down the road uh, when there is a testing, uh, somebody starts to complain uh, and they start to murmur uh, and they said, is there a God in heaven? We just performed a miracle for us. He performs a wonder. Before a healing. And then we say, where is the God of heaven? And they murmured, and I, I'm just reading down through here, and the people murmured against Moses, they grumbled, and uh, uh, Brother Kennedy used to say, Christians get the mully grumps. And I've never heard that before. I don't, it must be a Texas term or something. Uh, but the molly grumps. But they complained. They cried out to the Lord. Uh, and uh, as they cried out and they, they came to Moses, they said, Moses, you let us out here. Here we go three days into the wilderness of shore. And sure, we're in a wilderness. Sure, we're in an experience we haven't had. And it's a dry time. There's no water. And then we come to the water. And the water's bitter. What are you going to do now, Moses? What are you going to do now, Pastor? I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Well, they cried unto the Lord, and Moses prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. Did you see that? Now, we don't know what kind of tree it was. We've been talking about the olive tree. We've been talking about the willow tree. We're talking about the tree of life. We don't know what that tree was, but the Lord showed Moses and pointed out a certain tree, and he took that tree, cut it down, and threw it into the bitter waters, and the waters became sweet. There he made, oh, and when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. I'm in verse 25, by the way. The waters were made sweet. He cried to the Lord. You see, he cried to the Lord. The people cried to Moses, and Moses said, I don't know what to do with you people. There's a lot of times I say, I don't know what to do with you people. People will come to me and say, Pastor, I have a question. And I say, I got an answer, but it might be the wrong one. But I knew who has the right one. His name is Jesus Christ. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Pastor, I need counseling. You got an MED in counseling. Would you counsel me? Yeah, get to the altar and find a true counselor. His name is wonderful and counselor. He's the chief counselor. 
Pastor, I need a doctor. I need to go and see a doctor. Well, we can go to the chief physician. His name is Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. And so he showed me, uh, he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, pointed out, it says in another version, that said, you see that tree over there, Moses? Moses said, yeah, I see the tree. He said, take that tree and cut it down and throw it in the water. Lord, is that you talking like that? I'm going to cut down a tree and throw it into the bitter waters and something's going to happen. The Lord told him to do an unusual thing. Yet what I'm trying to get to you, if the Lord tells you to do something you have never done before and you don't even believe it on yourself, how in God's name is that tree going to change that bitter water into sweet water? How can that happen in God's name? By willingness and obedience. And so why I'm bringing that tonight, uh, if God tells you to do an unusual thing, if God tells me to do an unusual thing, and he does that all the time to me, I do unusual things. I dream unusual dreams. I see things and then I say, Lord, can that possibly happen? He said, look at the miracle that you're standing in. And you ask me a little thing like that, can that happen? Can that happen? Can people in this little, on a Sunday night here on Mother's Day, can God change a life and change a body and bring a creative miracle here in this house? Can God do a thing like that? Uh, even as the people grumbled and complained, they went to Moses and they said, uh, Moses, uh, what are we going to drink? What are we going to drink? Uh, and so Moses took that tree, cast it into the waters, and the waters became sweet waters, which means that they were able to drink. And there he made a statue and an ordinance, established a covenant with them, and proved them, and tested them, and said, and now verse 26, and this is the verse. And he said unto them, everybody say, if... And you're going to see it four times down through here because I'm going to bring it from other versions. Uh, if you will hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, if you will listen, it says in another version, Moffat's translation, if you will listen, everybody put your ears on and say, I'm listening. If you will listen carefully to the voice of God, if with all your heart you will give attention, and if only you would obey the word your God, if you will heed the word. Listen, here's the first if. If you will, then God will. Did you hear what I said? If we will listen, if we will attentively hearken. I like that word hearken because it means more than just listening. It means listening and obeying. We used to sing a song called Trust and Obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And so we can trust him and say, Lord, I trust you. But he is looking for us to do something with our trust. He's looking for something... Uh, that we have faith, but he's looking for an action of faith. Faith without works yeah. is dead. And I heard Jan say two things that you learned down at the Maybe Center uh, was the Word of God and the works of God. And uh, so we get the Word of God and we hear the Word of God and the Word of God comes down into our heart. Uh, it's engrafted in our heart, uh, but if it just remains there, we become a stinking place. We have to let it loose. Uh, and let our faith uh, go out to others. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, and so that action is important. So if you will diligently, everybody yell, hearken. hearken. Say it again, hearken. hearken. That means to heed, to listen, hear, and do. Listen, hear, and do. If you will do that which is right in the sight of God, do those things that are well-pleasing to him. You see where in that version it says, uh, if you will diligently hearken. Everybody say, hearken. hearken. Listen to the voice of God, your God, and will do. Everybody say, I will do. I will. Say it again, I will do. I will. What is right in your sight. What I hear, then I'm going to do. What I hear, I'm going to respond to it in obedience. And so if you will do that which is right in his sight, and if you will give ear, take your ear off and give it to him. <laughs> you, you think that's funny because uh, uh, year, years ago there was a man who uh, 
I actually used it in the Catholic schools where he, he was in a, a, a bomb thing in, uh, in one of the wars. Uh, and uh, anyway, his ear was all, he could take his ear off and play piano with it. Daryl, can you do that? No. <laughs> Give ear. Well, listen, if you will hearken, everybody shout hearken again, and do that. If I will do that, that I hear, when I hear the sound of the armies of the Lord, I'm going to join the army of the Lord. I'm going to see victory. Say it out loud. I'm going to see victory. And I'm going to give ear to his commandments, his precepts, and I will obey them, and I will keep all his statutes. And God then responds with his covenant, and he says, uh, uh, the commandments and keep all the statutes, and he says, I will put none of these diseases upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does that mean? That means if we hearken, we hear, we give heed, and we begin to do what the Lord is telling us to do. Are you getting this? And if we will give ear to him, listen carefully to what he is saying, he makes a covenant with you, and God does not break his covenants. And when he says, I will, that is a covenant. He is making a will with you, and he is saying, I'm not going to put COVID, whatever one is coming up next in the fall. They'll make one up. Maybe COVID uh, uh, Omega. I don't know. Some, there's going to be something coming up. That crazy guy up there that's getting a million dollars uh, and, and we're paying him through government uh, and he's telling us all these things. Uh, uh, he's a nutbag. Excuse me. Uh, I didn't say any names. So, uh, so Some of these people, they're supposed to be so smart. They are so stupid that you can't do anything with them. You can't even talk to them. But I'm listening to somebody who has wisdom. I'm speaking to somebody uh, who has knowledge. Uh, and I'm listening. Uh, listen, uh, for he is calling and he is speaking to us uh, through his word. And he said, if you will hearken to me, and if you will open your ears uh, and open your eyes, uh, open my eyes, Lord, uh, that I might see glimpses of truth uh, that you have for me. Uh, place in my hand uh, that wonderful key uh, that shall unclasp uh, and set my people free. Hallelujah. It's in my hands. He said to Moses, what's in your hand? He said, just a stick, just a rod. He said, lift it up. He lifted it up and a whole sea parted. The wind blew and the sea parted. Somebody say, hallelujah. hallelujah. What's in your hand? The word of God is in your hand. But he said, I will put none of these diseases. I'm preaching that pretty hard. I'm preaching to myself too. I came through I came through the wind last night when I decided to, uh, I got up for my little time of relaxation, and when I am relaxed, I'm all ready to go again. And so I went out, started up that tractor sitting in my house, and I said, I'm going to take that over. I put sweatshirt on, and then I put Ken's coat over top of me, and I had a hood, and I thought, well, this is pretty nice out here, and uh, it's not raining or anything. And I got down past the mailbox, and when I passed the mailbox to get onto the highway, and I took it out of turtle and put it up into rabbit, and I put it and I started down that road, all of a sudden, it started like pelting me. I couldn't see out of my glass. I had to take my glass off, stick them in my pocket, and then I couldn't see because it was just pelting and pelting and pelting. And I just kept going down, and I said, okay, what I'll do, if you're going to do that to me, I put her up into high gear. I mean, I'm flying down the road. Cars were trying to catch me. No. <laughs> and, and, and I came through all that. And, and the wind, all of a sudden, I mean, when I passed the mailbox, all of a sudden I went to the wilderness of shore. <laughs> All of a sudden, the wind came, and the rain, and it was 
hard rain, almost like a little sleet. Ping, 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 hit me on the head. And I, and I said, well, I'm not going to turn around. I'm not going back to where I was. I'm not going back to no Egypt. I'm not going back up on the hill. I put that thing up and took the, never mind, I put her into high gear. I don't know what year I was in, six, I think. Uh, but anyway, I was moving. And <laughs> moving down the road, and cars come by, they didn't even toot at me. They probably didn't even see me. I was just a red flash. <laughs> <laughs> I was going through the wilderness of the shore. I turned onto the game lands road, come down into a little valley. It was so nice, I could have stayed there. There was no more wind. The rain was just a, just a nice little, you know... And I thought, man, it's so nice down here. I'm warm. The engines are still firing up. And, and uh, I had slowed it down to get down over the hill. Get down in. I was down in the bottom. And, and I could have stayed in the bottom. And it was nice and calm. I came up to the top of the hill. And guess what? I'm back in the wilderness of shore. Uh, sure, it was hit me. Uh, sure, it was felt me. Uh, but uh, I, knew, I knew there was a pavilion that I was headed for. And I came and, and I went to turn in uh, down at this, this road down here. And if, if you ever travel down there, that's why the kids get down there in the summer. There's water down there. And the water was probably about two or three feet deep. And I thought, oh, should I just go on down the highway or should I go through there? I said, I'm going to test this machine. Put that thing into low gear. I didn't want to go and push it. Never mind. I didn't want to float away. <laughs> But I went through that deep water, came right up on, and uh, I came up over the hill, and that wind just started blowing again and pelt me, but I saw the pavilion. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. I saw a pavilion. The wind sometimes will pelt you, and the circumstances will come against you. But guess what? Keep on going, because God has a pavilion made for you, and he has a place of safety. He has a place of refuge, and it doesn't matter what the world is doing, pelting you with all kinds of discouragement, pelting you with all kinds of things. You know that pretty soon you're going to be under the pavilion. And I got under the pavilion, and I actually took my jacket off. Because now I'm warm, and I'm covered. Somebody say, I'm warm, and I'm covered, because I'm with Jesus. I'm in the pavilion of his love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, things happen to me. I'm a sign. And the sign is that you're going to go through some things and you're going to be pelted by people and people are going to pelt you with all kinds of things. People won't agree with everything you, I'm preaching. People won't agree with everything, but I'm preaching the Word of God and I know that God has a safety place for you. He has a place of refuge. He has a place, a pavilion that He has already made. Hallelujah. And I'm headed for that pavilion. I'm headed for that. And I know that in Jesus there is great whoa I don't know where that all came from but I thought I enjoyed preaching this <laughs> somebody said to me one time pastor you used to say you don't like the pastor and you don't like to preach I said no I didn't I don't like to talk to adults and, uh, and then one day the Lord talked me about that and he said I, I, I called you he said, you didn't call yourself. I called you out of teaching. And I called you into the ministry. And you do what I tell you. And I said, okay, Lord. You got a pavilion for me? Because some of you are being pelted right now. By circumstances and by people. And people are saying things against you. And people have come against you. It makes no difference. God has a pavilion for you. Hallelujah. And he said, I will put none of these diseases or plagues upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Is that in the Word of God? Hallelujah. For I am. Right down the bottom. Everybody stand up and say, The Lord is the one who is healing me. He says... I will put no disease nor plague upon me. COVID, you have no right. My body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. I am healed. 
by the Lord Jesus Christ. Say it again. I am healed. Say it right now. I am healed by the Lord Jesus Christ. By His power, by His authority, you may be seated. I am in His pavilion. Hallelujah. You never know what I'm going to preach, do you? No. That's not, no, never. (laughs) I am the Lord that, I was thinking of that old song. Where the healing waters flow, where the joy, celestial glow, there is peace and rest and love, where the healing waters flow. Well, this 1526 was given here. The other ones I just gave to you, and they were all free. But this sign says that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. And it's 1526, and Lynn, by the way, I'll give this back to you. You may need this someday. But uh, I'm reading down now. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am Jehovah thy physician. I am the Lord your life giver. I am the Lord, and I am your health that I bring to you. Knox translation. I am the Lord, and I will make you immune to all diseases. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your immunity system that you have in your body is better than any shot you can get. And I understand some of you had to get shots. I understand that. But God has created this body. Give us an immune system. And right in the word of God, let's see what translation that is. Uh, A-A-T, I don't even know. I am the Lord and I make you immune. You will have health and you will have healing. I am Jehovah. I am your physician. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The chief physician is in this house tonight by the Spirit of God. And he can touch you and heal you. I don't have to lay hands. We can do that. Uh, I don't have to get the anointing oil. And that's beautiful that we can do that. Uh, I don't have to pray the prayer of faith. uh, Because God is doing a sovereign covenant. uh, And he said, I will put none of these diseases nor plagues uh, upon you. Can somebody get a hold of that? Uh, Can somebody receive it and say, uh, God said, uh, by a covenant, uh, he is not going to allow uh, any plagues plague or any disease come into my body in the name of Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. I am your chief physician. That's why I love it when when I talk about uh, going to the doctors and uh, talk about going to counselors and psychologists. I don't need a psychologist. Somebody told me uh, one time They said, you ought to divorce that woman. She's crazy. And you ought to send her to a psychiatrist. Well, I've been with her for 50-some years, and the only reason she's crazy is because I've been with her that long. (laughs) So uh, I'm to blame, so if I have to send her somebody, (laughs) never mind. And then, and I'm going to finish right here, and then they came to Elam. Everybody said they came to Elam. And Elam means a place of strength, a place of strong support, a place of might. And uh, they came to Elam where there were 12 wells of water, three score and ten palm trees. And let me just relate that to you, 12 wells of water. Somebody say good water. First place, they came three days and there was no water. Then they came to bitter waters. And then he took the tree and put it down. And many say that could have been a symbol of the cross. Because what Jesus did on the cross made our bitter lives sweet once again. And uh, then we come on down and we have this covenant and this condition in uh, in 26, 15, 26. uh, And then they finally come to Elam. (laughs) And I love this. Uh, There were 12 wells of water. 12 springs of water. I thirsted in the barren land of sin and shame, and nothing satisfying there I found, but to the cross of Christ one day I came, where living waters did abound. Somebody say, I'm drinking at the springs of living water. Now, how many wells of water? Twelve. What does that mean? Place of authority. 
We can drink of the waters of heaven. Isaiah 55, 1, Ho, everyone that is thirsty, come unto me. Come without money. Come and buy and eat. How do you buy and eat? It is by your willingness and obedience and listening to the Lord. And you're drinking at the 12 wells of water. You go to one well, and that well is a sweet well. And you go to another well, and 12 wells means authority, and 70 Palm trees uh, means the place of refreshing. Hallelujah. Don't you think I was refreshed when I came under that pavilion? And then don't you think I was refreshed when I was able to go over and jump in the truck and turn on the key and turn on the heat? Uh, I was refreshed. Somebody say, you, you were blasted, Pastor. It was almost like sandblasting, trying to get off some of that junk off the outside of me. <laughs> But guess what? I'm not blasted anymore because I'm in his pavilion. And I'm safe. And I have a refuge in him. And not only that, I'm looking at this. Uh, and i got to go back over 26 one more time, please. Uh, because this is the one that the Lord gave us. Uh, let's look at this word and really look and dig, dig, dig deep uh, and engraft it. Uh, saying, if, if... You will diligently hearken. If I will hearken, if I will heed, if I will listen intently to the words that he is saying. Now, how do you do that, Pastor? You've got to get away from all the other voices, by the way. You've got to get away from all the media voices. Uh, I, I do that purposely. I go to the media, and I have found something on our TV now that gives you uh, six different uh, media things at the same time, CNN, uh, uh, diff different ones. Uh, and uh, I, I go to that, I listen to one for a little bit, and I listen to the other, because I want to hear what the enemy's saying. And I know what the enemy's saying. I'm going to come, and I'm going to overtake you, and I'm going to despoil you, and I'm going to catch up with you. <laughs> Bob Fye, one time, he was a, a banker down in Cherry Tree, and uh, we, we were going to buy the building down in the other the other place, and he said, you can't, you can't buy that building, you don't have any money. And uh, so when I came back and told him I went to, uh, from his bank and went over to the main bank uh, and, and got the money, he said, you know what? He said, you're faster than computers. <laughs> well, because I have somebody that knows more than computers. He has more than gigabytes. He has more than one of those new things they're coming out with. Uh, I, I don't have to pick up one of those phones. I can listen to what my father is saying. And if my father is speaking to me through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit, uh, and if I have something down here, no, no, no. The other day I went to pick up my phone, and uh, it didn't work. Ken comes running up the stairs, and he said, our TV's out. My TV is out. And I said, well, go get the other one in the family room. He ran over and he said, that TV is out too. I went back and checked the one in our bedroom. And guess what? That TV was out. So I went to pick up our phone, which is on the uh, Hughes net. And, and I picked up the phone. And you know what it said on there? Just registered. It said, no power. Oh, no power. No power in the base, it said. No power in the base. Boy, that'll preach, won't it? No power in the base. Uh, and so I couldn't do anything. I was trying to call somebody. I couldn't do anything. Ken wanted to watch his uh, uh, softball games, uh, and he couldn't watch his softball games. We couldn't do anything. So you know what I did? I went back to the base. And the base is right beside our TV in the family room. So I went to the base, uh, and, and I looked at the base, and the base said, no power. That's all. No power in the base. I said, no power in the base. Jan, if I don't have any power in the base, I might as well forget it i got to have power. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. And so this little illustration, I'm telling you, there was no power. And so I looked, and I, I, I have a, one of those things that you have several plugged into, and I looked, and everything was plugged in. And I thought, well, well everything's plugged in. We still don't have power. I looked over, and there was a little light in the window there, and that light was lit. And I said, well, we have uh, the breakers okay. And I happened to look over, I had an extension cord where all these things were, and I saw the extension cord hanging out just a little bit. Some of you are just uh, not getting this spiritual thing here. If you hang out just a little bit away from what God has for you, you're going to lose your power. So I went over and pulled that thing out and took it over because I saw the light shining on the other side. And I took that plug and I plugged it in and heard, bing, bing, 
ding, ding. And I looked, and the TV starts working. And of course, it's a direct TV. That, you know, it has to do all that. To, uh, yeah, don't touch anything right now, it tells you. And it gives you all instructions and so forth. Uh, but somebody said, uh, the thing said, no power in the base. And I said, oh, Lord, when we don't have any power in the base in this church, uh, then we're in trouble. We have power in the name of Jesus Christ. We have power in the name of our Heavenly Father. We have power, dunamis power in the Holy Spirit. We have exousia power, a delegated power through the name of Jesus. We have domineering power. Hallelujah. We've got the power. Somebody say, turn on the power, Pastor. We've got to turn on the power. And uh, don't worry, I have five minutes yet. Uh, and if you will diligently hearken, that means uh, if you will listen with your ears, and then the next part, uh, you listen to the voice of the Lord and will do. I will do what you have me to do. Only to be what you want me to be, Lord. I will do what is right in his sight. And I will listen. Everybody say, listen up. Pastor speaking pretty loud tonight because I want you to hear this. Uh, if you will obey, if you will hearken, diligently hearken, if you will do what is right, if you will listen and obey. Listen and obey. That means when God tells you to do something, uh, and uh, it's like Moses. Uh, Moses, what do you got in your hand? I, I got a rod in my hand. Uh, well, lift it up. He said, you, you, you sure about this? No, he didn't. He lifted it up. He listened, he heard, and then he obeyed. When he did, something happened. When he took that tree that was standing there because they had bitter waters, and he took that tree, and God said, show, pointed him a tree, and said, take that tree and throw it in the water. That sounds pretty dumb. Are you sure this is God speaking, or am I having an illusion here? Am I having a pizza dream? Yeah. Well, he did it, and the waters turned sweet. You see, the hearkening to the voice is good. Speak, Lord, for your servant here. Say that. Speak, Lord. Say it. Speak, Lord. That's scripture for, the, for your servant here. And when I hear, then I will do. And then I will listen and obey your commands and keep all your statutes or the word. And God speaks. Then God speaks, and he said, I will put none of these diseases, and the other version said plagues, upon you. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Lord, I remind you of your covenant. You said you would put none of these diseases like he, they do in the world. Uh, and he said, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I brought upon the Egyptians, let them have their COVID if they want it. If they want to put a mask on, let them put a mask on and choke to death. I see, I saw this, and I mentioned this one time before, I was stopped up at Dairy Queen, and they were, somebody was taking a break, and they came out, and they were smoking, taking their smoke break, smoking like that, and as soon as they were done smoking, they put on their mask. Even I... I'm smart enough to know that that's not a good thing. Yeah. Even I know enough to know that God, when he says, I will put none of these diseases or plagues upon you, COVID may come, but COVID must go. Yeah. God's not going to do it. And then he says, for I am the Lord God that heals you. The chief physician now is here. The sympathizing Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, here we are, Lord, in your presence. Here I am, Lord. I'm an open vessel. Here I am, Lord, wanting more of you. So take my mind, Lord, and make it new. Open my eyes, Lord, that I might see. Touch my ears, Lord, that I might hear. 
Anoint my lips to speak your truth. Here's my hands, guide my feet, mend my heart, make me complete. A servant of you. That song was, when we were down at the other building, it was written by Nina Fleming. And I've tried to give it to other people. I've tried to give it to evangelists. I've tried to give it to singers. Uh, and it has never gone out. It is for this house. And so we sing this uh, in conclusion tonight. Uh, Here, Here I am, Lord. I'm an open vessel, here I am, Lord, wanting more of you. So take my mind, Lord, and make it new, open my eyes, Lord. That I might see, touch, touch my ears, Lord, that I might hear you. Anoint my lips to speak your truth. Here's my hands, guide my feet, mend my heart. Make me complete, a servant of you. Is that your desire tonight? This passage of scripture, you can take it home and you know where it is. It's in Exodus 15 and verse 26. Exodus 15, 26. It's a word that just is not just another word. God puts a covenant in there. And he said, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. He said, I will put none of these diseases, another version says plagues, upon you. And so if that is a covenant of God, God does not break his covenant. And so that is reality in the name of Jesus. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we invite you to watch a new service every Sunday evening at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Watching on Facebook, please click the like button and leave a positive comment, and please share with others. YouTube watchers, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Help spread the good news of Jesus Christ.